Emerging and Future Technologies by Sanjay Sharma Overhead transparency projectors were used by the military during World War II to train their soldiers by projecting information to a larger audience. By the late 1950s and early 1960s, schools and businesses started to make use of overhead projectors. The overhead projector became a basic tool in the classroom but it was eventually replaced with newer technology. The overhead projector was replaced with document cameras and multimedia projectors because the dimensions and weight of the overhead projectors were relatively large. The bulbs needed frequent replacement and information needed to be placed on transparency film. These projectors used to occupy 15 by 14 by 27 inches and weighed about 15 pounds. Overhead projector bulbs burnt out frequently. Teachers needed to carry spare bulbs in case a bulb blew out in the middle of a lesson. The bulbs used in overhead projectors are incandescent bulbs as featured on the right side, which have a limited usability life caused by the tungsten filament wearing out. The bulbs in overhead projectors are changed about once a year in everyday classroom use. Materials projected on an overhead projector had to be photocopied onto transparency film prior to its use. This meant that teachers had to prepare materials ahead of time. They could not easily project information from a textbook or a demonstration as needed. Document cameras allow for an easy projection of any item under its camera, even in full color. Colored images on a transparency are not as vivid when compared to images displayed over multimedia projectors. Using multimedia projectors attached to a computer allows for teachers to display any image without the need to print the digital image onto a transparency film. Printing materials onto a transparency film before projecting an image was a limiting factor that made overhead projectors obsolete. Replacing the transparency projector Multimedia projectors have replaced the overhead transparency projector because they are smaller than overhead transparency projectors. The bulbs for multimedia projectors are pricier when compared to the bulbs found on transparency projectors. However, the bulbs in multimedia projectors do not have to be replaced as often as those found on transparency projectors. The preparation time no longer includes the time needed to copy materials onto a transparency film. Did I mention how portable the multimedia projectors are? The multimedia projector featured on the right is small enough to carry around in your hand, though the larger models are used to provide brighter and clearer resolutions. Tetrad for the obsolete transparency projector. The transparency projector enhanced motion projectors and slide projectors. Slide projectors showed um, images using a slide strip and motion projectors showed pictures um, like movies. It was made obsolete. It was reversed by multimedia projectors. It retrieves um, visuals for scaffolding from the past such as posters and it made whiteboards and chalkboards obsolete. Tetrad for emerged multimedia projector. The display of information is enhanced. Static images are no longer the only type of media displayed since multimedia projectors are connected to laptops that enable the viewing of video files. Overhead projectors are made obsolete because it required the use of transparencies. Multimedia projectors can be used with laptops where special markers and transparency film are not needed. Motion projectors are made obsolete because multimedia projectors allow users to watch video. Remember again, motion projectors showed video. Also, the quality of the images are improved with multimedia projectors when compared to overhead projectors. The multimedia rekindles the overhead transparency projector when showing still images. The multimedia projector rekindles the motion projector when displaying movies. At some point, multimedia projectors will be reversed by interactive whiteboards and holographic displays. 
I was able to interview four teachers that you will be seeing shortly. There are no IT specialists found within the school district. The option to purchase technology is left to the teachers who vote by content area. In essence, the teachers are the decision makers for the technology and supplies they use. Interview questions um, pertain to overhead projectors and multimedia projectors of when it was noticed in its use and what are reasons to like or dislike um, those types of projectors um, as well as how are they used in the classroom. The consent form does not contain their signature however um, it, it is up here for display the reason why it does not have their signature is because um, the participants did not want their signature to be shown over the internet. Yeah, when I was a student, uh, my teachers were, or my professors, used uh, overhead projectors, and that was in Manila. I was born, raised, and educated in Manila. But, um, that time, there were no, of course, the, over, the um, multimedia is very expensive, you know, and so you can find that in those classrooms. So we just used a um, simple overhead projector, and uh, I think it, it, it did work well with the students. Uh, what year? Uh, when was that? I don't have to tell you what year. But when I was here on Guam, okay, when I got here in 1995, the multimedia is, was not available still in the classrooms. Uh, when I got here in 1995, there were no multimedia uh, materials or, I mean, equipment. And so the teachers still use overhead projectors. And, uh, of course, that's, the bulbs are expensive. And so when it um, fails, Teachers just uh, stop using the multi the overhead, and what do we use? Just simple, you know, blackboard and uh, chalk. And it was only 2000. Uh, when was that? 2011, when schools were provided with uh, multimedia projectors, and same as here. And uh, speaking for JFK. We had our first taste of uh, multimedia in every classroom only like two years ago, I think. And so that makes of the, the, the multimedia now is the popular uh, choice and overhead projectors, are, the use of it is on the decline. Uh, I haven't been using overhead projectors for two years because uh, of the availability of the multimedia. But sometimes I have materials like transparencies that are really good, like in my uh, course, this is marine biology, uh, I have very excellent uh, old transparencies that I still want my students to see, so I make use of the overhead but I don't lend it to anybody because the bulb is $35 a piece. <laughs> so, uh, well, anyway, it's still on standby, you know. Uh, it's very useful if I need to show them those transparencies. Oh, what, what do I dislike with overhead? Okay, one thing, of course, it's bulky, it's heavy. Another disadvantage is um, you cannot really play on the resolution it's set. Of course, there's the fine focusing, but it's not good enough. Another disadvantage could be the um, it's not it doesn't provide for uh, the applications now. It's we have now modern technology. You have to show moving images, and of course you can't show that with overhead projectors. Okay, you have to use your multimedia. Um, okay, uh, right now we're using multimedia projectors. 
um, it's very useful. Okay, anything you want to um, show the students, it's there. You can use it for from your iPhone, for you, from your um, uh, Androids. You can also, from your iPads, you can show anything. Of course, from your laptop also. It's very handy and uh, less work on the teachers on preparation of materials. I think I have discussed the disadvantages of the overhead uh, or over multimedia projectors. What else? What else? Uh, so one, just to summarize, the disadvantages, it's that the, the use of the um, overhead is on a decline because one, it is bulky, and second, it doesn't allow for uh, um, flexibility in you know, use use of other uh, slides, like let's say moving images, and then third is the production also of the transparencies is very expensive. When I was a student, we did not use uh, overhead uh, projector. Uh, it was way back in the 70s. Okay, but uh, as I as a teacher, I like to use overhead uh, projector. I find it more convenient and easy to use, especially because I have different um, kinds of students, some are slower than others, so that um, if they need to spend more time on, on a certain topic, I can, I can um, uh, let them use the uh, transparency on the side. Meanwhile, I can go on with my current uh, lesson with the other students. Uh, I also use the multimedia uh, in my teaching, but uh, I find it more complicated. Uh, first of all, there are so many uh, wiring or connections that uh, we have to deal with. Sometimes there's uh, power fluctuations that can destroy the uh, equipment yeah, because the equipment is more sensitive compared to the overhead uh, projector. Now also the multimedia is difficult to set up. And uh, another thing is um, if, the, if the room is uh, completely dark, which the students would like to have in, in order to have a better view, um, the, some students tend to fall asleep. But uh, in the case of the overhead uh, projector, we don't have to have a dim uh, classroom. Uh, we can still uh, see it if, if, even if uh, it's bright. Now, um, another thing with the uh, uh, with the uh, multimedia is that uh, some uh, students are slower than others, so we cannot just keep on uh, 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 using the equipment while the others are still behind, and they cannot uh, they cannot copy or they cannot uh, understand. Uh, uh, some topics at a faster pace when we use that kind of uh, equipment. Okay, um, another thing with another advantage of the uh, um, overhead projector is that uh, we can design our own uh, drawings, we can uh, format our lessons so that it's easier for the students to understand. And also, the students themselves can make the, their own uh, transparencies as a part of their projects. And uh, they can make their own uh, presentations. And, uh, and that also, uh, there's a method where they can uh, draw on the board using the overhead uh, projector, which is not uh, possible if you're in, in, uh, in uh, in the case of multimedia. Now the advantage of multimedia is that uh, the students, some students now are very much into electronics and uh, they like uh, sophisticated, uh, uh, what do you call that, um, techniques in uh, showing uh, uh, graphics. Uh, they can also make their own uh, presentations. 
they can also, but this is more for uh, those students who are advanced. I use multimedia projectors now because um, the kind of um, teaching um, uh, media that we have, like for example, uh, we can show movies, uh, we can show cartoons, we can show uh, uh, the textbook, we can project it on the, on the, on the screen, and uh, we can have uh, also dissections that can be projected on the screen using using the, for example, the ELMO. That's part of the multimedia, right, the ELMO? Hi. Back when the dinosaurs were on the Earth, there were these things called overhead projectors. They were large and cumbersome. And you had to tote them around on this huge cart. And if you're going uphill, oh my god, hold back. But really, um, <laughs> I first noticed overhead projectors, or I was aware of them probably when I was like in middle to high school. Usually it would be used um, either in language arts when they wanted to um, put like a poem up or a, a selection of a reading from a novel up so that the whole class can see instead of um, passing out papers and even when there wasn't um, enough books or, or, or materials for the students. Um, they were kind of exciting, interesting. I loved going up and being able to write my answers or mark my choices on the overhead projector. Uh, the downside of overhead projectors are when the light bulbs died out because then we couldn't use them and a lot of times getting replacement bulbs took forever. Now the multimedia projectors, I think the first time I've seen them was in my teaching career, um, just with like probably within the last 10 years or so when we would um, see them basically at uh, large gatherings, maybe a training or um, when we're having staff development was when I really first started noticing overhead projectors and I thought they were actually really cool and I wanted one. And now that they're available to the schools, I think it's, um, it's, it's a neat tool. Only because um, the students are more focused. They get to see something that's out of the ordinary. It's not always a paper. Uh, or book, it's, it's up, it's projected. If you put it somewhere where they can write on it, they love the opportunity of going up and, and marking their uh, answers on uh, either the paper or the whiteboard. And um, they actually even like creating things that they see their own work projected up in the, um, uh, for everyone to see. So. One of the disadvantages I see with uh, the multimedia projectors is they use it for the same thing all the time. Teachers are not skilled or they've not been trained in, in the various ways that they can actually uh, be beneficial. A lot of times the teachers I see take them into the rooms to show a movie or to put something, you know, kind of like up on the board, but not really so much for the kids get to use it for their benefit when they create things um, on the laptops or uh, the computer. I think we benefit, a lot of us can benefit more with, from more training and um, even just having it, um, probably I would say having your own. I mean, sharing a projector per grade level maybe, or even um, within a school, one or two is kind of, uh, there's a, it's really a disadvantage because you have to plan as to when you have access to it. But if you had one for every teacher, then there's really no stopping the teacher in, in making more or creating more engaging lessons and more um, um, things, for lack of a better word, stuffs more things that the students can use in your classroom and, and moving away from uh, textbooks 
into more uh, online and more teacher created or student created uh, material. Good. My first experience uh, with overhead projectors ironically wasn't in elementary, middle, or high school, but when I started uh, taking uh, classes at the University of Guam and my, one of my professors who was my audio-visual professor um, who was teaching us how to integrate audio-visuals into uh, our lessons as a teacher, he first introduced us to using the overhead projectors and he just basically showed us stories and, and, and how we could uh, use it to elaborate with the children in terms of text, not necessarily pictures but more text. Um, as a teacher, I basically used the overhead projector for presentations. I didn't. I taught kindergarten for a long time, and um, we were tasked to do different things and, and head different committees. So that's when the overhead projector was made available for us to do. And um, when I wanted to integrate a lot of um, speaking, and I knew that the audience wouldn't be able to grasp uh, the importance of what the topic was about for, say, um, a staff development or say accreditation or even just to, um, from training that I had gone to and I had to share with my colleagues, I would use an overhead projector. Uh, to me, that was the upside that I could um, take text and before there were computers, because I've been teaching for 17 years, and then um, find another avenue to get teachers to understand what the training that I had taken. The downside was I wasn't very much, I, I didn't have a lot of training. So I had to go find um, equipment. Not every teacher had an overhead projector. We had to borrow it all the time. And then sometimes the equipment wasn't working. Someone had to replace the, the light bulb because I didn't know how to use it. And then finding um, pencils, the little black pencils to, to mark on and having the um, all the materials necessary was the downside because we'd have to kind of um, find it around the school and ask around. Uh, next topic is the um, multimedia projectors. Again, I have not had any introduction to that in my in my um, early education as a, a student. Uh, even at the university level, we I didn't have access to have training to it. It was basically the professor using it and showing us and demonstrating. So I didn't have hands-on experience with it until I went into my teaching career in elementary. And um, even then, I would ask my um, the, the, the staff there to, to hook the machines up to, to find the correct plugs that go to the computer and to um, be able to have all the materials ready. We weren't, um, I personally wasn't fully trained to using it back then. And I would use it again for, for more presentations to colleagues and, and peers instead of to my students in the classroom. But now, as a teacher, um, the material is more readily available in my school system, and it's there every day for the use. Uh, every sc my school has one, and we, it, it is made available to use as integrated into the lessons that we teach with the students. And I'm not there yet, but I will get there. <laughs> Dr. Thornburg posited that there are at least six forces that resulted in the development of new technology. Those six forces are evolutionary technologies, rhymes of history, disruptive technology, science fiction, increasing returns, and red queens. Evolutionary technology occur when a new technology is a progression or growth of a previous idea. The emergence of the overhead projector is an example of an evolutionary technology. Overhead projectors evolved from slide projectors in the 1950s, so it is identified as an evolutionary technology. Images were no longer presented on a series of slides printed on a continuous image strip. The images were now available through transparency film. The emergence of multimedia projectors is also an example of evolutionary technologies. More people started using computers and access to a new feature emerged out of the evolution of technology. Images are no longer um, needed to be put on static transparency film. Instead, the users are allowed to connect their computers to illustrate pictures, texts, and even videos. 
Rhymes of history is the use of technology that looks similar to something in the past. It is a modification of an idea that existed in the past. Overhead projectors were used during World War II when the United States military trained their soldiers. Printing materials for each soldier was costly and unnecessary because overhead projectors could be used to project the display of texts and images such as poster boards. Overhead projectors are a good example of rhymes of history because it took the past practice of teaching from large visuals found on poster boards and pictures shown from slide projectors. Transparencies and picture slides could hold similar information of display um, of text and images. Multimedia projectors are an example of rhymes of history because it does look similar to older technology. Multimedia projectors project the text and images like the overhead transparency projector that it replaced. Multimedia projectors expanded the display of visuals to include videos. Edison introduced the Vitascope to the United States in 1896, which was a projector that displayed videos. Multimedia projectors perform the tasks of the vitoscopes and overhead transparency projectors. Dr. Thornburg noted that a disruptive technology is a new technology that suddenly appears and creates a new way of thinking about a technological task. With overhead projectors, the creation of the transparency film was a new way of thinking of how to project images onto larger surfaces. Mohan noted that Roger Appledom created a transparency in the 1960s where people could write on the transparency for display on a large area. Hence, this new idea created the new chalkboard where teachers could write on the transparency instead of using chalk. Despite its portable weight, compact size, and the ability to attach to computers, multimedia projectors are not a disruptive technology. Multimedia projectors mirror overhead transparency projectors in that content is projected onto large screens, which may enable group learning. The use of personal computers is an example of a disruptive technology. Huge mainframe computers have shrunk to fit on a desk. Now, these computers have become compact laptops, tablets, and phones. However, the multimedia projectors evolved from overhead transparency projectors in its features from an input on a transparency to that of having wires attached to a computer, meaning the inputs have changed. Originally, computers attached to the projectors using VGA wires. An evolutionary technology occurred when new features like RCA, S-Video, DVI, and HDMI were added to the multimedia projectors. All those fancy letters simply mean all those inputs on back of this projector that you see here. Since the new input features were evolutionary, these were not so much of a disruptive technology. Unfortunately, little has been found to show that science fiction led to the formation of overhead and multimedia projectors. However, holographic images, uh, I'm sorry, however, holographic image projectors is discussed in science fiction. The oldest movie that I could find that used projectors was Star Wars when Princess Leia said, Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. Arthur posited that increasing returns occurs when a technology gains a market advantage to become the dominant technology. In the case of overhead transparency projectors, two companies were competing for dominance in this market, 3M and Bull. Both technologies were similar when they started because they both allowed handwritten notes to be projected. However, 3M gained market advantage when the company produced a method to copy text onto transparency and demonstrated how it can be utilized in the classroom. Multimedia projectors are not a good example of increasing returns unless it is compared to overhead transparency projectors. 
multimedia projectors gained the market advantage from overhead transparency projectors because it was able to incorporate the use of computers and digital cameras. In comparison to the multimedia market, no company had a clear advantage because all companies changed to incorporate new ideas at the same time. Companies offered different lenses such as DLP, LCD, and LEDs at about the same time. The types of inputs such as VGA, DVI, and HDMI appeared on all brands at about the same time. The intensity of light, also called lumens, improved at the same time. The resolution and size of the devices improved at the same time as well. Dr. Thorn uh, Thornberg posited that red queens occurred when companies compete with each other to stay within the market. The companies involved with multimedia projectors keep upgrading their features to remain competitive. Because of this race to continually improve just to remain competitive, multimedia projectors are a good example of red queens. 3M and Bull were not competing with each other for market dominance by continually outdoing each other on the development of the overhead transparency projector. Overhead transparency projectors are a poor example of red queens. 3M gained market advantage by the force called increasing returns because it targeted the education field and a simpler method to copy text onto transparency sheets. Speculation about the future. Holographic displays go beyond the 3D experience we enjoy today. These holographic displays will have a capability of showing an object move throughout the classroom, pacing between students instead of being a static picture found on the projector screen. In the near future, holographic displays will become commonplace in our schools. Greenfield Boyce noted in 2008 that scientists have created the ability to project different holographic images in succession, but with a four second delay. That was again back in 2008. In 2013, Dodson noted that holographic projectors can display 30 frames of images in a second, much like a television today. Wallace noted that researchers from Japan and in Poland have created a method to illustrate a holographic image without using a zoom lens. This new method reduces the costs of owning a holographic projector by reducing the required parts involved in showing a holographic display. Elon University suggested that holographic displays might happen in 2025 through holographic television. Based on the advancements from 2008 to 2013, a holographic display by 2025 is highly possible. At this point, multimedia projectors will be replaced by holographic display. Now, not all content will be holographic ready at this point, nor will multimedia projectors cease immediate production. However, the demand for holographic projectors will excel and gain market dominance soon after its emergence in 2025 if costs remain relatively competitive in comparison to multimedia projectors.